Hey, welcome back. I'm sure you've heard the term serverless and Jamstack in the past. If not, today you'll get a primer on these technologies. And if you already are an expert, I want to introduce you to one of my favorite platforms for building serverless and Jamstack applications, Cloudflare. My name is Otto, and let's get to it. All right, let's talk about Cloudflare. As a developer, you might have used their services in the past to provide a CDN, DDoS protection, or other features to your web application. But did you know they also have a serverless offering? They call it Cloudflare Workers. And if we look at the homepage for Cloudflare Workers, we see that kind of their marketing speak is, you write the code and we handle the rest, which is pretty typical of serverless providers. You know, whether you're looking at AWS Lambda or Google Cloud Functions, they all promise that you can just write the code and they'll handle all the servers, the deployment, and all that good stuff. Cloudflare Workers is similar in this regard, but I think their developer experience and the experience of deploying serverless functions is much, much better. Before we get into creating a serverless worker, let's kind of see what Cloudflare Workers promises. So if we look at their marketing page, you know, we have automatic scaling, we have a high performance global network. And if you've used Cloudflare as a CDN in the past, you'll know that this is really true. They also allow you to write the serverless functions in JavaScript, Rust, C and C++, which a lot of the other providers do not. But I think one of the coolest features of Cloudflare Workers is their support for zero millisecond cold starts. And if you're a serverless developer, I'm sure you've run into this in the past where certain functions take quite a bit of time to load the first time. With Cloudflare, you don't have to worry about that. And another reason that I really like Cloudflare Workers is they're exceptionally affordable with very transparent pricing. Like if we go to their pricing page, you have a very generous free tier, but you also have this bundled tier that starts at $5 a month, and then it's just 50 cents per million requests with no additional fees. Um, if you've ever tried to figure out AWS Lambda pricing on top of all of the other things that needed to make it work, this bundled approach really is uh, a breath of fresh air. But how do these functions work? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and create one and, and take a look. All right, so I'll navigate to the Cloudflare workers dashboard in my Cloudflare UI. And here I see on the homepage all of the different Cloudflare workers that I currently have. At the moment, I only have one, which is my fiance's website. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. But to create a new Cloudflare workers function, all I need to do is hit the create a worker button. And I'm taken to the UI to create my function in the web browser experience. And all I need to do is write my code. And here by default, what we have is a handle request, which simply just returns a hello world message. So if we were to call this serverless function, all we need to do is hit send and we get our response. We get a 200 okay and the message, hello world. But let's say we wanted to add some real functionality to our Cloudflare worker. And in this case, let's go ahead and call to an external API to get some data and return it in our worker. So in our case here, we can use the fetch API uh, to go ahead and make an external call. So I'll say const um, data equals fetch. And let's go ahead and fetch from the cat facts API and get some facts about cats. Uh, since this is, since this returns a promise, we will await. And then once we get that data, we'll turn it into JSON. So we'll say const facts equals data.json. And then finally, in our response, since we need to send a string response back, all we'll do is json.stringify our response, which is gonna be the facts, and we are good to go. So we'll hit send, and it looks like we didn't get any facts. Let's do that again. Um, and the reason we didn't get that either is because this also returns a promise. So we need to await. And there we go. So we just wrote a serverless function or a Cloudflare worker that goes and gets a bunch of cat facts and sends it to us at this particular URL. Now at this point, the worker isn't deployed, but we can do that very easily by just hitting save and deploy. So I will do that. Let's hit save and deploy. And our Cloudflare worker will be live to the world for anybody to consume right away. So we have our URL, I will copy it, or actually just go to it, and we have a number of cat facts. So I think by default we get five of them back, 
every time we refresh, we might, no, we don't get different ones back, but that's okay. And then if we go back into the Cloudflare workers dashboard, back here, we'll see our new worker created. I think that just takes a second for everything to catch up. Yep, last deployed a minute ago. Now, while you can do all of your development in the Cloudflare UI, it's kind of limiting, right? We as developers, we love having control over our environments and you know, writing in our favorite code editor, and you can absolutely do that with the Wrangler CLI. So if we look on the Cloudflare Workers homepage, we'll see that you know, it tells us how to install Cloudflare Wrangler and, and how to deploy functions there. Now, I wanna show you that as well. We're not gonna go through the process of creating an entire application or function using the Wrangler CLI, but I do have this other worker, uh, MeganGrant.net, that is deployed using the Wrangler CLI. And what this is, it's actually a whole Jamstack website. It's built with Hugo that I deployed to a Cloudflare worker. So let's take a look at what that code looks like. I'll open up my uh, Visual Studio code and most of these directories and files, they are from the Hugo framework. So we don't have to look at those and you know, might create some videos on how to work with Hugo later. But what I wanna focus on is this wrangler.toml file, which tells us how to deploy this serverless function on Cloudflare workers. All we do is specify the route, the zone, and what the entry point for our application is. And then we also create this workers site directory which manages uh, additional settings for the, for the um, Wrangler CLI tool. And what I have in here in this index is just a bunch of redirects. So Megan's website used to be hosted on WordPress and when we moved it over to Hugo and to Cloudflare Workers, we had a bunch of redirects and just cleaned up some URLs. So, you know, we have those written in here. Um, and then the rest of this stuff is uh, automatically generated by the Wrangler CLI. So, uh, you know, I've never looked into it, but there's more settings that we can change. And essentially what happens here is every time, uh, you know, we create new content, she publishes a new blog post, all we do is push our code to a GitHub repo, which calls the Wrangler CLI and publishes uh, a new version of her site. So if we go into GitHub here on megangrant.net, we can see that we have a GitHub workflow created. And if we look at the file, we see that, um, you know, we are building the application using Hugo and then deploying using a Wrangler action. So that same, you know, Wrangler publish command that we could do locally, we have it set up as a GitHub action. And if we go to her site, we could see that it loads very, very quickly. And you know, this is partly due to everything being static and another part due to it being hosted on Cloudflare's global um, you know, edge CDN. So wherever you're accessing the website anywhere in the world, it's gonna load super, super quickly. Now this used to be the preferred way of deploying serverless functions using the Cloudflare platform. But recently the folks over at Cloudflare actually formalized the process with a new product called Cloudflare Pages. Now, this is similar to Netlify, for example, or uh, the Vercel platform, where you build your Jamstack website on your preferred platform. So it could be Next.js, it could be Hugo, Jekyll, whatever platform you're using doesn't matter. All that matters is you point your GitHub repo to the platform and it's going to pull in the code, build the application and deploy it globally. So Cloudflare Pages is in a public beta right now. I just got access to it a few weeks ago and I've been playing with it and it works really, really well. Um, in the past, my personal website, AutoXYZ, used to be hosted on Cloudflare Workers, but as of about a week ago, I moved everything over to Cloudflare Pages and I couldn't be happier. To show you what that looks like, let's go into the Pages UI. And here, you know, to deploy a new Jamstack website, and again, your platform really doesn't matter. Uh, all that matters is that your app is a Jamstack app that gets built into a st static application and you're good to go. So it could even be a, uh, you know, it doesn't even have to use a frame framework. If you just have a static HTML website that you wanna deploy, you can do so as well. And all you would do is hit the create a project button, point to your uh, GitHub repo that you wanna deploy. In this case, I'm using my blog and Cloudflare does the rest. 
If we click in here to see what's going on, we see that our master branch is set to production. So anytime we merge our code into the master branch, there's a change in the master branch, it's gonna get rebuilt and it's gonna deploy our application. But if we have any additional branches created, what Cloudflare is gonna do is it's going to build and deploy kind of preview branches for us. And I'll show you what that looks like. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code here. And here I am in the master branch. I'm gonna change it out and let's create a new branch called Cloudflare test. And we'll just create a new blog post. So let's go down here. I'll copy this one, paste it, and let's just create a new, new blog post. We'll say test blog published today. And you know, we'll update that the publication date is 3.7 and the title will change to, this is a test log. Uh, we'll set the slug to test log as well. Hit save and let's push this to our newly created branch. So we'll say writing test log. And this is really great for collaboration you know, where you might want to create some content and you want it to be previewed by your boss or a team member before pushing it to production. And you know, with these preview builds, you can absolutely have that and kind of have the best of both worlds where your application, where your static website loads super fast, is globally distributed, but you still have that flexibility of having multiple previews um, and you know, have other people review this, the content before it gets published. So I just pushed this branch, let's go into uh, the Cloudflare Pages UI, and you can automatically see that we have this preview environment saying that you know our Cloudflare test received a, a new uh, push with the message of writing the test blog, and it is in progress. So we are building this application now uh, as a preview. So it's going to take about you know a minute or so for this to build, and we'll be able to see it. And while it does this, I can also show you that, you know, you absolutely can have custom domains and the settings right now, since it's in kind of this beta form, it's limited. So it's not as full fledged as Netlify or Vercel's um, offerings, but I still think it's really, really good. I mean, you have full control over your uh, builds. So, you know, what are we building from the master branch? Uh, are we going to build all the previews? Yes, we are. Uh, what the build command looks like. So in my example, I'm also building my personal site with Hugo. So my build command is Hugo, uh, and then I, I pass the minify. The output directory is gonna be public, so you can edit all of this stuff, and it just works really well. Any environment variables you have, you can add them as well. So when your application is built, you can pass the correct information in. So let's go back and see if the application is built. Looks like it's still building, so Awesome, so it looks like our application has successfully built. We got the check mark, our deployment was successful, and we can view our build. We have a custom URL based on what the kind of hash of the pull request was. So if we go to this URL, we'll see our application as deployed. We're seeing this is a test blog, and if we click into it, we'll see uh, that content. And the reason we're seeing a 404 is it's redirecting to my uh, auto XYZ live homepage, which does not have this blog. So uh, this is something that, that I could fix with the, the environment variables. Uh, I, I guess this is a pretty poor job on, on my part. <laughs> um, but that's um, Cloudflare pages for you. And like I said, this is still a product that's in beta that's you know, they just went a public beta, so you could try it with your Jamstack applications as well. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I had for this video. I just wanted to introduce you to Cloudflare Workers and Cloudflare Pages because these products work really, really well, allow you to build really cool serverless functions that are much, much easier, in my opinion, than setting up an entire workflow with AWS Lambda or Google Cloud Functions. So, you know, if nothing else, I hope this video introduced you to these two new technologies and I hope you have a blast playing with them. Uh, I'll be creating a lot more content about serverless and Jamstack technologies in the future, so stick around. If you like the content, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.